Hey everybody, welcome. Today we're going to be at the vet school. We're going to be working on a horse that has a fractured coffin bone. This horse came into the school for lameness and after doing some diagnostics and stuff, they ended up taking an x-ray of his foot and realized that he had a fractured coffin bone. And here's some pictures of it, some pictures of the x-rays. You can see the fracture right there. Here's another view. You can see the fracture there. Um, anyway, so here's the package that I'm going to put on him today. It's going to be a handmade bar shoe with a gel insole. And stay tuned. I'm going to show you why and how I do that. For those of you that are new around here, my name's Sheldon. I'm a journeyman farrier. And in the middle of my fourth year of vet school, my final year. So I'm pretty excited about that. And this video is going to be kind of unique. I'm going to be working with another farrier. You'll see him pop in and out later on in the video. And that farrier actually, he's the one that has kind of taken me under his wing and it made me a better farrier. And he's the reason I'm half as good as I am. So I appreciate his help. We were actually here shoeing a different horse that I needed some help on. And this horse came in and so we worked together and got this horse taken care of. As we're going along here, if you have any questions, go down to the comments, let us know what your questions are, and I do try to read through them and answer as many questions as I can, so let me know what questions you have. As you can see, there's not a lot of foot to take off of this horse. He was trimmed not too long ago, and so I'm really just getting him kind of flat and level and getting his foot collected up and getting it ready for the shoe. I'm not taking my nippers to it and taking a whole lot off, so some of you guys are probably sitting there scratching your head thinking why in the heck is there purple around that frog which is a dang good observation and the the answer to that is when veterinarians take x-rays of feet they take and put play-doh up around the frog there and it helps them get a better more clear picture and the veterinarians today just happen to use purple so there you go So it's 13 and 3 quarters. And 4 inches. So with those measurements right there, it tells me how much steel I'm going to need to be able to make the bar shoe. And for those of you that are curious, I end up using 15 and a quarter inches of 3 eighths by 1 bar stock. So here I am cutting it off my main piece. I didn't have a saw with me, so I had to cut it that way. If you don't mind, I'm just going to walk you through and let you know kind of step by step what I'm doing. Right there at the first, I was just marking it just so I kind of have some landmarks that I, to go off of of where things need to happen. Um, so this is called hockey sticking, which is creating half of my bar for the bar shoe. If you guys didn't notice, I sped up this the shoe making part of this video just to not bore you guys. And so I'm, I do not forge this fast, I guess is what I'm getting at. This whole process of trimming the foot and making the shoe and doing the whole deal took about an hour to do, so obviously I had to trim it down and keep it entertaining. So, so I'm doing the same thing on this side. What you do to one side, you do to the other. So I'm hockey sticking, and then I'll bend the branch around and get it ready for the weld. If there's folks out there that are wanting to learn how to do this, um, I'd recommend there's a guy on YouTube named Craig Turnka. He's from world champion blacksmiths and he does a dang good job of explaining all the different little steps it's i'm not a master teacher so i'll try to stay away from that um or do what i did and find a really good farrier around you and have him teach you so right here i'm welding you saw the little powder i put on there that's called flux um makes it possible to weld i'm not about to say i know what that does but without it you can't weld so um, I usually wet, put flux and weld twice on my bar shoes. Some people do it three times. It's just what I do. So you guys might notice I got two pieces of tape on my fingers. Um, you guys seem to be intrigued by injuries that I acquire while shoeing horses. So I got some pictures here for you. So this one on my thumb, I was mentioned that I was shoeing a horse right before this. And I was in the middle of shoeing it. And I put a nail through it. And he had jerked his foot. And the nail somehow got into my fingernail and ripped my thing fingernail and then ripped the skin as it came out so I threw some tape on that before I started this horse and then a second ago as I was welding I set my hammer down close to my forge and the handle got real hot so then when I went to weld it's kind of a critical thing you gotta your timing has to be right 
and I could tell that the handle was hot, but I didn't think it was that hot, so I just held on to it and kept uh, getting my weld put together. And then as I started going on, I realized that it blistered my finger there, so I ended up putting some tape on it and just moving on, so here we are. So this part I'm doing here is an important part when you have a horse with a fractured coffin bone. I'm pulling clips around the shoe. Normally you don't pull toe clips and side clips at the same time. But what we're doing here is we're trying to stabilize that hoof capsule with those clips and not let it move. And what that's doing is kind of using the hoof capsule as a cast for that bone that's inside the foot that you saw that was fractured. So now that we got the shoe all put together, the nails holes punched and the clips on there, we're going to go give it our first fit. You saw me measure right there and, and that's just getting it close so I don't have to make so many trips back and forth to the horse. Um, you may ask why there's four nails on one side and three on the other. It was just kind of preference how many nails I thought was adequate to hold the shoe on, which made it kind of difficult with my nail spacing because I was going to put side clips on there. You can see my, my nails aren't symmetrical, I guess, but anyway, ended up working out just fine. So the clips needed to come in a little bit on my shoe. Other than that, it fit pretty good. So I'll get those fixed and then go for a final burn and a biggest reason we're burning these shoes on is to give those clips a little pocket to sit in which is going to really give them a lot of strength and holding that hoof capsule No, we're not. So I've never had this happen before. Right here, you'll see it kind of flash in and out, and then the camera will, will just break. And I'm not sure what happened here, but it, luckily I got my camera fixed before I moved on, but we missed some of the nail in there. So Technology and me don't get along, I guess. So now that we got the shoe all nailed up, so this is where we're gonna put the gel insole in there. And you can see what I have there in the gun. It's a two part epoxy type stuff that mixes in that long straw, has a swirling mechanism in there that mixes it. And then that blue thing I got on there is a foam board with a sticky side so it sticks to the shoe there. And then the pour in pad will go underneath it. And you can see I'm having some difficulties here. I've never had this happen to where I couldn't get the straw underneath that pad, so you'll see I struggle through it here, and, and my mentor helps me, and we get it figured out. So. Get on there? Yeah. Go? Yeah, right. go ahead, if it will. Nope, it's all just coming back up out. Coming out of where? Oh, hang on a second. This whole thing's cattywampus. Where's it coming out of? Oh, right there. I wonder if I could just... Oh, let me go get another tip. Corner off of there. There you go. You got the foot? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Twist this thing. And the reason we're kind of working a little frantically there is because this stuff starts to set up once it starts going through this tube, and so it's kind of a timed game there. So. And obviously we end up getting it figured out, but this is not the correct way or the normal way of doing this. Just had to improvise a little bit. Sorry, buddy. What's going on with that? Is it clogging up? Oh, it's coming out, it's coming out. You're good. Is it coming out over here though? I don't know. I just don't think you got around to this other side. Yeah, it came out of here. Okay. Let's just, Let's just set, it it. set it down, set it down. This guy's pretty badass. 
<laughs> How did it form under there? It's all messed up. We gotta take it back off. Surprise! Are you surprised? So you can see that under that corner where we picked up that foam board and unstuck it from the shoe, that some of that gel um, kind of came out there. But it's fine. I'll just take it off and it'll be as good as new. So I kind of go over what all the aspects of this shoe package is. So obviously the bar going across the back, that stabilizes the back of the foot. And then the clips stabilize the front of the foot. And if you wanted to, you could put those clips a little further back and that would help kind of restrict the movement of the back half of the foot a little bit more. And then what the pour-in pad does, which is what the, the gel insole is called. So basically as that foot takes on load from the horse the sole flexes down in a normal foot as the weight comes down the bony column and so what I'm doing there is I'm making it to where that sole doesn't flex as much I'm restricting that movement and also I mean he's got a broken coffin bone right in there and so as he steps on a rock or some uneven ground or something I don't want nothing to push up there and make his foot hurt and so on top of stabilizing it that gel will help just soften the blow of any rocks that he steps on and stuff so and the vets want to see him back in about six weeks or so, and then we'll take the shoe off, reevaluate, take some more x-rays, see how we're healing, and then we'll go from there and see what we end up doing. If you guys are wanting to see more little videos or pictures or stuff that I do, go give us a follow on Facebook and Instagram. Um, there's some details about that down in the description. And because I don't get to video everything, and but I share pictures and stuff on there. So if that's something that in, interests you, just give us a follow there. And I'm gonna try to share some pictures and let you guys know what I'm up to in my fourth year of vet school. So if that's something that would interest you, you know where to find me. So that there that I'm using a sanding block just puts a nice finish on your work. I hope that was enjoyable for you, and I may have an update the next time I shoe him. I might be able to video it again and get that to you guys, so go over to the channel and see if I've got that out yet. And in the meantime, stand up for what you believe in. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Remember who you are, and we'll catch you next time.